Okay, just a little disclaimer before I start off. I picked the title of this talk like two months ago, and then like one month ago, the FBI came out with their own Operation Duck Hunt, uh, which took down the crackbot uh, botnet. This is not related to that, so I guess you can decide at the end which operation is the better one. Um, I thought given that it's so late in the day, I would start off with the main takeaway. Um, if you are in charge of an organization's network, please block this domain because uh, you will later learn why it's so dangerous and what um, threat actors can, can do with it. Um, so basically, Ducktail is a .NET-based info stealer. It was discovered in June 2022 by WithSecure. Um, it mostly targets Facebook ads and business accounts, but also steals browser cookies and account details and several um, Gmail address details as well. Um, once it affects, in, in fact, the machine, it also registers adversary emails as Facebook business account owners. Um, this talk is not going to focus too much on the technical detail of um, Ducktail because there's a lot of good blog posts by both WithSecure and Zscaler about uh, those details. It's going to be more about who is behind Ducktail and how they did it. Um, the main method of exfiltration for Ducktail was done using Telegram exfiltration, using Telegram bots. Um, I will show later how that looks. And the question this talk is trying to answer is why did WithSecure um, call Ducktail Ducktail? So these Telegram chats, they basically look like this. You can see the, um, the zip files that are exfiltrated. So once Ducktail infects the machine, it will um, collect all the data, bundle them together in a zip file, and then transmit them using the Telegram bot API to a Telegram chat. Uh, this one also contains screenshots, which were added in a later version, but will become very important uh, later on in this talk. So the Telegram bot API works like this. You have, first of all, the bot API domain. Then when you create a bot, you get a bot token by um, Telegram, and you have to use that bot token in every communication you do with the API. Uh, then you specify the method. In this case, send message, which simply sends a message to a specified chat. And then you specify the parameters, in this case, um, chat ID, which is a Telegram chat ID, and the text, which is the data you want to exfiltrate to, to your Telegram chat. So there's um, several other methods. For example, the get me Telegram method um, returns basic information on the bot, like the bot's name, um, that's actually mostly it. And then the get chat administrators method and the get chat members count, they do what they say, so they return whoever created a chat and who is the administrator, and they would also return a specific chat members count. And then the get updates method is very important as well. It returns um, messages that a bot have, has seen. So I'm going to demonstrate that, which is, makes it easier to um, understand. So I'm going to do a short demo now. If you have Telegram on your phone or on your laptop, um, could you please start a chat with the hack.lu demo bot? Um, you can find it if you go to, if you just search for ducktail2023 underscore bot, it's going to show a start message domain, if you can see this, and then um, I'm going to wait a bit. Um, you can send anything you want, but it's, it might show up in the presentation afterwards, so don't send anything you don't want to be seen. I'm going to wait a bit. Mm. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, for now I'm going to visit the, the first URL, which basically just, uh, it contains the bot token of the bot I showed you before, the hack.lu bot, and it's going to call the get updates method on this um, particular bot, so we can see what is shown. So as you can see, there's already a few new messages that you guys have sent to the bot, and it, you can clearly see that you can easily, this way you can monitor in real time messages that a bot has seen over time. Um, so let's say you have a bot token from a malware, um, you do the same thing, you call get updates on it, you will see maybe communication between threat actors in their private chats, you might see um, exfiltrated victim data, you might see IPs that you can use to um, um, attribute the activity, but there's uh, one issue, one, main, one issue with get updates is that first of all, it only caches um, results for the last 24 hours, so it doesn't, you can't get historical data. 
and it also doesn't show messages sent by the bot, so that's the main uh, limitations, as you can see here. So how do we retrieve all the messages that um, aren't cached by get updates? There's a, another function which is called forward message, which forwards a message from a chat to a different chat. Um, I'm going to demonstrate as well. I'm going to pick a, I'm going to pick uh, this chat ID for now. And I'm going to put it into a forward message as from chat ID. I'm going to forward message Z1 for now. Oh, maybe this one sent. I'm going to try. Uh, this one then. Maybe message ID 2. Okay, maybe this doesn't work. But um, I'm going to try it with my own then, because I did this yesterday, just to be sure it works. Um, if I forward a message from my own chat to my own chat, which is a bit weird, but it's going to appear in the Telegram chat. Um, I sent test yesterday, so it will appear here. So in this way, you can basically write a brute force script that's going to forward the first 200 messages to your own chat, and you can basically just kind of establish a whole timeline from like the first message seen in that chat to the last one. But that's the basis of this investigation. Um, so who is Tyduck? Basically, when you call get chat administrators on any Ducktail chat, you will receive a particular username, which is Tyduck, and who is marked as the creator. So that can only like give you an idea where the name Ducktail is coming from. If you, um, but this person, Tyduck, he committed a few OPSEC failures. First of all, the, uh, the first version of Ducktail didn't encrypt the zip files that were exfiltrated, so they were just unencrypted. You could just, um, capture them and read them what, what was exfiltrated. And he also did testing sessions on his own machine, which basically led to his, uh, a specific email that was used on his machine that being exfiltrated, which was ducktie, and then a few numbers at gmail.com. And this email was um, used a few years ago in a registration for a domain, which you can see here. Um, you can see the registered name again, the email address, and also uh, the city as well as well, the, the country, which is Vietnam. So this is probably where with Secure came up with the name Ducktail. But we can actually go further because in March 2023 there was an update to Ducktail. Uh, this update was tracked as Duckport by WizSecure, but it has pretty much the same functionalities, except um, the malware will now take screenshots of infected uh, devices and exfiltrate them over Telegram as well. So um, you can see a few of the bots on the right. That were, they were all uh, kind of labeled in the same way. They were all SDC prods 03 or 04. And well, continued OPSEC failures uh, by Tyduck revealed a bit more information about the operation. So the next um, slides will all be basically screenshots from their um, from their machines and basically just show what actually happened. So this is the first screenshot. Um, it just shows one of the actors Telegram chats. Um, the important thing is you can on the top left uh, corner you can see the different um, SDC plot channels that were used by Ducktail. You can also see the chats that highlight right now is with someone called. Um, Hue code. Uh, you should remember the name Hue because it's going to come up later. And you can see that they, that this person, um, Hue sends the, uh, compiled zip files, which actually, the, which contain the ducktail malware. So what did the adversaries do with these zip files? They would set up LinkedIn job alerts, um, well, LinkedIn job advertisements in the same, uh, for like performance marketing manager position, mostly marketing positions around the world targeting different countries. And then, um, well, they would also get banned sometimes because they didn't, they didn't take the offset that seriously. And so they got called, called out by LinkedIn. Um, but what was inside these zip files was basically a series of JPEG files or PNG files showing the actual product, but then also, which looks like clearly like hand drawn Word and PDF logos, which are actually, of course, not Word and PDF documents, but actually actual um, EXE files containing the Ducktail info stealer. 
So once the victim would, ex would execute this, they would have um, their account compromised and their Facebook business account, well, they would have access to the Facebook business account of the victim. Now, what would they do with that access to the Facebook business account? They would set up their own ads using um, their victim's reach, their victim's uh, brand. In this case, they set up a particular ad campaign for a store that was selling magic drawing pens. Um, so as you can see, even threat actors do dropshipping nowadays. So I think the influencers must be right that dropshipping is actually the best business ever, if even these people are doing it. Um, and they would also play some league once they were done. This was, this was from a, um, adversary machine. He, he was playing league while he was doing these, um, while he was selling the, the magic pens on, on Shopify. So just as a quick recap. Um, they would craft advanced targeted malware. They would set up massive LinkedIn phishing campaigns. They would infect some Facebook marketing account of huge corporations. Then they would set up customized Facebook ads, and then they would start a dropshipping business selling magic drawing pens. I think the steps sound a bit weird to me. I don't know if this is really smart or really stupid. But And then they would play some league as well just to relax afterwards. So you might think, um, is there more we can find out about DuckTale? Well, actually, even the developer of the malware ran the malware on his, on his own device. So this is a screenshot from the developer trying to um, run some .NET code in an online sandbox and trying out the screenshot capability. There's a screenshot showing Stack Overflow search for how to take screenshots. Um, this is a screenshot of the whole um, Facebook parsing um, so like Facebook account passing functionality in DuckTale. And then most uniquely, there was, um, well, there's also, um, so they, they were using certificates to sign the executable so they could uh, get past antivirus. And in this case, they used Sectigo and they even paid uh, $349 for it. So their business must have been going quite well if they could do this. And uniquely, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to focus on it later. But you might see a name on the, bottom right corner, I'm going to zoom in a bit. So this was basically, this is the guy behind uh, at least Duckford. Um, and you can also see the duck again, which might explain why the username is TyDuck. And this was actually seen in, also in a different place with an uh, email address and a birth date. So I think that should be enough to hopefully find the guy behind it. And um, yeah, what are questions left to be answered? Is the developer behind Duckport, so the version of that takes screenshot, is it the same guy as the developer behind DuckTale that has not been established yet? Um, how many Magic fans have they actually sold? That would be quite interesting to know. And did they actually win the league game? I'd be quite interested to know that. And yeah, how common is Terminator C2? So why would you care about this threat if you don't work in marketing? So this method is used by many investors nowadays. Um, the most famous ones include Agent Tesla, which is like quite quite well known and quite um, used by threat actors. There's Async Rat, which is actually a rat not really an info stealer. And there's Print Stealer and yeah, several others. But it's also used by major APTs like Dark Pink, which targets Southeast Asia, and Eurotrooper, which targets um, countries in, the, um, in Central Asia mostly. So the main conclusion is you should block this domain unless you want to get attacked by APTs or even get your information stolen by low-level crime actors. And yeah, thank you for listening.